Hello. Hello and welcome to Scott's Amateur Woodshop. This is going to be my holiday gift guide video. And it's probably a little late, later than ideal, but there's no such thing as a bad time to give a gift, is there? So some of these are things I've made videos about individually before. Um, and the others, you'll want to look in the description for all of them, basically, because I'll have more information about them. So let's run through it. Um, here's a good gift for any woodworker. It's a sharpening kit, which I talked about in another video. It's a Pelican 1010 case plus pocket water stones and a four inch diamond stone. It should run you a total of about 50 bucks. Plus you need a cloth or something. A washcloth is perfect. Um, it's a great portable kit. It's a great beginner kit. I highly recommend it. And I have another video that talks in more detail about it as well as even another video that shows you hand plane maintenance and uses it. Um, I really enjoy this. Um, another tool that I really like is the Mora 120 knife. That's M-O-R-A 120. It's a great carving knife. It's a serviceable marking knife. Um, I like to make pipes and spoons out of it um, with it and uh, yeah, it works pretty well for marking too. Mine's been modified a bit. Um, these are about $25 if memory serves. Um, really nice, high quality thing that's not too expensive because of its simplicity, I think. Um, okay, how about a hand plane? A uh, small hand plane that's great for a beginner or someone who just may not have one in this size is this squirrel tail plane from Lee Valley. It's a little under $50. Um, if you want to get a fancier version, I forget how much this costs, but I'm pretty sure it's closer to a hundred. This is a violin maker's plane from Lee Nielsen. It will not rust except for perhaps, well, most of it is rust proof because it's brass or bronze. I think, um, it does have this depth adjuster. Um, it's called a violin maker's plane and there's other small planes too. Um, this is a squirrel tail plane, this double convex, which is good if someone's making chair seats or maybe um, doing something more sculptural. Um, there's also, um, if you look around in Lee Valley, there's also this little inset plane is what they call it. Um, now you could inset this into a block of wood and make a really personalized gift for someone. Um, and they have some of these other planes, which I'll put a link to these in the description, but um, they have, uh, these have wax all over them. Sorry about that, um, coconut oil actually. Um, but this is a, another small plane. So the, just to show you that there's options for getting someone a small plane, that's a tool that I recommend um, getting some sort of a small plane early to people so it makes a good gift. Um, here's a Ryoba, actually sold as a Vaughn bear saw. Um, it's, uh, it's a great saw. It's even good for homeowners. It's got a rip side and a cross cut side and a replaceable blade with impulse. It's hardened teeth. You can use it in awkward positions and you can use it for almost anything from dovetails to rough carpentry. Uh, it's a great tool. It'll run you about 30 bucks. Um, card scrapers and burnisher. You'll probably spend more on the burnishers than the card scrapers. I've seen card scrapers for as little as $7. I'm going to recommend a brand. I'm probably going to recommend the, um, the Lee Nielsen brand. Uh, but there's other good ones as well. Um, Lee Nielsen also seems to have a good burnisher, as does Check Edge Tools. I got this one as a kit, and those will probably cost you 30 to 50 depending on where you find them. Um, I made another video about card scrapers and how to sharpen them and where to get them, so I'll link that in the description. Um, okay, here's another good one. Opinel knives. I've got a few here to show you. These have mostly been modified. This one is actually an oyster uh, shucking knife. I'm showing it to you because it's the only one that I haven't modified the handle on. And just to show you what the handles look like when they're new, um, they have this shape which allows you to wrap them on the table to 
if you do that harder, I don't want to make a lot of noise right now, but it'll start the blade on its way out um, and it makes it easier to grab and pull. Um, it's a nice handle, but I have found that it's fun to modify them and that's good to do if you want to make a personalized gift for someone. So here's a number seven, which is a nice size for a, a pocket knife. And I slim down the handle in this direction so it fits in a pocket nicer and I curved off this back edge for kind of the same reason. Um, I left this point where you can wrap it on the table. Now the best feature about these knives, in my opinion, is the twist lock. This locks them closed in your pocket. It can also be used to lock them open and it's actually using a wedging action. So even if the parts get loose over time, this will still wedge tight. It would just slide a little further along the wedge. I'll show you what that looks like up close. See that wedges up under that edge of the blade. Um, I'll just show you a couple more that I modified. This is their number 12. I use it for food. I necked down the handle here and textured it and beveled this off because I thought it looked nice and did a little work here because I thought it looked nice. But the main thing I did was to narrow it down here. That means that when you hold it, um, these two fingers just fit around it a little more easily. It makes it a lot more comfortable. Um, so that that's a little bit personalized. I also put a hang hole in it so I could attach a little piece of paracord if I wanted to. Um, this started as a number nine and I modified it wanting to make it function more like one of these carving knives, the Mora 120. Big handle, little triangular blade. So um, I modified the blade by grinding it down and also the handle. And in order to make this thumb nick accessible, I had to make this little notch which also is a convenient little place for your pinky to fall into. It's a pretty nice knife. I wouldn't say it's quite as nice to carve with as the Mora, but it folds up small and I'm pretty proud of it. Um, and it is quite nice to carve with. Um, okay. Um, now I already recommended this Milwaukee seven inch drafting square. It's only about $16 last I checked. Um, Sorry, not drafting square. Uh, raft, rafter square is what they call it. I think of it as a speed square. Um, it's a nice tool. kind of does everything that a tri-square does, plus can also work as a uh, marking gauge. Um, it's meant more for carpentry and roofing, but it actually is made precisely enough to use for woodworking. I think it's a fantastic and versatile square. Um, I would happily recommend it as a general purpose, inexpensive square. Um, Here's another tool from Milwaukee that I really like. This is their fastback knife, and they have a few. Um, this is good for carpentry work or general household utility. Um, you can see it says fastback here, and this one has, there's a few fastback knives. This one has a model number of 48-22-1505. Um, the reason I like it is because it's a nice combination of different features. It actually has spare blade storage for one spare blade. Um, which for me I found is enough. Um, and if you put this on your pocket, um, you also have a screwdriver at any given time. It opens and closes fast too, but I'll show you the screwdriver here. Um, this is nice to have handy. You know, I just loosened a friend's cabinet door hinge. It was loose and I had this in my pocket, so I just did it then and there. That's kind of why this is nice. Oh, I don't remember the cost. It'll be in the description. There'll be a link, but I'm pretty sure it was not very expensive. Um, Okay, another one, you can get a set of three of these self-centering drill bits on Lee Valley for less than $25. Um, this is a nicety that not everybody has. Um, they're hex shanks, so they can just click into some drills, and they have this little bevel tip so that they'll self-center on hardware. Like if you had a piece of metal with a hole in it, this lands right in the center and can't move. Um, so then you can hold your hardware where you want to mount it, drill the hole super precisely. Um, this would be a reasonably good gift for a homeowner if they're handy enough to use it. Um, it's also good for woodworking. Um, set of three because they come in three sizes and then these guards just slide back when you push it. I guess they have a lot of spring tension in them. Um, so the sizes in this set are nine this is a nine sixty fourths this is a seven sixty fourths and this is a five sixty fourths so they're around the eighth of an inch size range 
Now, I also want to talk about what not to get. This is my impact driver. Happens to have a reamer and a chuck in it right now. But now it's a great tool. But I don't recommend things like this as gifts because it's part of an M12 system. And unless somebody already has the M12 system, you really don't want to make the decision for them of what system to buy into. For the same reason, even though they're fantastic, I would not recommend any of these Milwaukee packout cases as gifts because you're really buying into a system. They all click together, and, and that's, uh, that's a decision for the person who's going to own it to make, in my opinion. Um, I might do a deep dive video on this in the future or tool video on some M12 tools in the future, so stay tuned for that. Um, okay, that's all I've got for you today. Um, I'll remind you to use the buttons down below and check out the description. That'll have a lot more information in it about everything I've just gone over. Um, and wish you happy holidays, happy gift giving experience. Don't stress about the holidays. There's no such thing as a bad time to give someone a gift. It might even be better if it's not when they're expecting it. You never know. And, um, See you next time. Bye now.